Hello and welcome to the de Havilland Aircraft Museum. In this video we're going to talk about a little known aircraft, the DH-91 Albatross. Okay, so let's have a look at this plane in a bit more detail. First thing, what do you see? Well, that tail, that says de Havilland immediately. It reminds me of the Tiger Moth or the DH-88 Comet. Now let's have a look at the rest of the plane. What do you see? Very, very sleek lines. This has got to be 1930s, the era of Art Deco, of form, of function, of uh, streamlining and maximum efficiency. So it's a particularly beautiful plane. So let's talk a little bit about where this plane came from and the history behind it. The background of this plane goes back to 1934, to the DH-88 Comet Racer, which was used for the race between the UK and Australia. And one of the planes that they haven't built for that actually won that race. And you can see a replica of that plane uh, in the museum today. Later on, after the race, those planes were used for high-speed mail services, particularly around Europe. And so it was realised there was a need for a high-speed mail plane and also a plane that could deliver passengers rapidly, particularly around Europe. And so de Havilland took some of the experience that they'd used for the Comet Racer and they put together the design of the DH-91 Albatross. So de Havilland drew on the experience of the Comet Racer and they designed the DH-91 Albatross. The wing was built as a single wooden section. In fact, the wingspan was 100 foot, almost the same sort of wingspan as you would have in a Lancaster bomber that came many years later. The fuselage also was built out of wood, and the wooden fuselage was actually lowered on top of the full width wing and bolted onto it. The whole plane was then covered with fabric, fabric doped, and it was painted. When designing this aircraft, de Havilland focused very much on aerodynamic efficiency. For example, the engines were specially designed Gypsy 12 engines. You can see an example of one of those engines actually in the museum today. The engines were air-cooled and special air ducts were put in the wing to make sure that the airflow wasn't disrupted too much and the whole plane was as aerodynamically efficient as possible. What you ended up with then was a very efficient, very high speed aeroplane that was used for air, both mail and also for passenger flights. A number of these were sold to Imperial Airways, they were used in flights out to places like Belgium, places like uh, Frankfurt, and even as far as Cairo and Alexandria. They were used for carrying mail, and they were used for carrying, uh, carrying fair-paying passengers. Obviously, this was quite a luxury way of flying in those days. So by the time you got to 1939, there were seven of these planes in service. But this was 1939 war clouds were looming and unfortunately flights to Frankfurt, flights to Paris were not likely to continue very much. So as war came closer uh, the planes saw less service, a, a couple of them were used for flying from Lisbon uh, to Ireland but generally speaking there wasn't much use for passenger flights across uh, Europe. So only seven of these planes were used. During the early part of the war, they were taken over. Some of them were camouflaged. They were used, some of them, for communication planes. But by the time you got to the middle of the war, with only a few planes in existence, with spares running out, the occasional accident, and there were not, they, most of them were then withdrawn from service by the middle of the war. Unfortunately, no examples of this beautiful plane uh, still exist. The only thing that we have in the museum, apart from these photographs, 
is an example of the Gypsy 12 engine. And for many people, that might have been the end of the story. But there was one other footnote. As war became more, more obvious, de Havilland wanted to be involved and wanted to contribute to the upcoming war effort. So they had a look at the DH-91 Albatross and did a design study to determine could this be changed into a high-speed bomber. It had a lot of potential. But in the end, they decided that wasn't going to be practical. So they took a clean sheet of paper. Instead of the 100-foot wingspan, they built an aeroplane with a wingspan of just over 50 feet. Instead of the special Gypsy 12 engines, they took advantage of the new Rolls-Royce Merlin engine, built a plane with just two of those engines because of the power of the Merlin. Like the Albatross, they embedded the radiators in the wing. Like the Albatross, they built the wing as a whole section and lowered the fuselage onto it. The result of all that design work was the DH-98 Mosquito, the prototype of which you can actually see in the museum. So, as you come to the de Havilland Museum and have a look at all the various artifacts relating to the Mosquito, the prototype, uh, plus the fighter bomber, plus the bomber version, do spend a few minutes just to pause in front of this photograph and pay recognition to the DH-91 Albatross. Only seven of which were made, but this was the father of the mosquito. See you at the museum.